Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income Podcast. Just wanted to take a quick second to let you know that Christina is definitely one of the most creative minds out there. Listen to her. She knows what she's talking about. Welcome to Stand Out, Get Noticed, the podcast that helps you speak and present with rock star confidence. I'm Christina Cantors, your host and founder of The C Method Communication Skills Training. For free resources and to subscribe to the show, visit thecmethod.com. Hi there, Rockstar, and welcome to episode 132 of Stand Out, Get Noticed. My name's Christina Cantors, and I am here with you for the second part of this series on outreach. Now, last week's episode was all about email outreach, and I shared a breakdown analysis of a good outreach email versus a bad outreach email. And it seems like it struck a chord with many of you. I received emails like this one from listener Christy, and she writes... The email episode this week was great. I work in digital marketing and I'm also a food blogger, so I know what it's like to get pestering, unsolicited emails wanting something from you. When you read out the email from, quote, Jane, I had chills down my spine. I was shuddering with rage. I was yelling stuff out, name, support email, as you were reading it. Then I was delighted when you broke it down piece by piece. Thanks for such an entertaining listen and I'm sure educational for others not in the industry. Thank you so much, Christy, for your feedback, and I'm glad I'm not the only one who gets frustrated with these terrible outreach emails. Now, if you missed that one, make sure you go back and listen, especially if you use a lot of emails to reach out to people and you haven't been having much success or you do have that special someone you want to connect with and want to do it properly. You can find that episode at thecmethod.com slash email outreach. Now, in this week's episode, I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to share with you my experiences with thinking outside the box when it comes to reaching out. And the show notes for this episode, and there'll be quite a lot of videos and everything I'll be referring, so make sure you write this one down. You'll need to go to thecmethod.com slash creative outreach. This episode is for you if you want to make a huge and memorable impact on that person that you want to reach out to. So if you want to get your foot in the door and make a huge impression, maybe you want to connect with an investor to present your new idea. Maybe you want a job at a super cool company, but you know that they get hundreds of applications a day. Maybe you want to interview a well-known thought leader for your podcast, or you want to get in front of a potential client. If you want to stand out and make a huge impact on this person you want to connect with, then you need to listen to this episode. First, I want to give you the backstory as to how I got into this because I've had much success with reaching out to people in a creative way. I don't know if you've seen the videos and everything that I've done, but I used to do quite a few of them. And it's what actually what got a lot of attention from people in the online business world and what led me in some way to what I'm doing today. So it has had quite a big impact on my life. In 2014, when I left my architecture job and I moved to New York City, and while I was over there, I was trying to connect with people to interview on my show, my very first podcast. And it was there when I I saw how hard it was to actually get people to write back to your emails. I'd go to meetups and I'd connect with people and then I'd email them and then I'd hear nothing back. So I thought, I've got to do something different. Now, I saw this awesome woman online. She, her name was Nadine, and she created really cool PowerPoint presentations. And I thought, I'd love to get her on the show to talk about how to make your presentation look fantastic. But instead of sending her an email, I actually created a slide share presentation and sent that to her. And she tweeted me back straight away to say that she absolutely loved it. We did the podcast and we're still friends to this day, which is amazing. I actually stayed with her in Miami when I went to the, when I went to the US last year. Anyway, I'll talk more about the benefits of this sort of creative outreach later, but that was the very first thing that I did. And after that, I thought, wow, that worked. What else could I do? So I made a couple more things. I created a book, like a handmade book for an architect who I admired, sent it to him. He said, yes, he'd be a guest on my show. I made a flip book out of post-it notes, sent it to Bjark Ingalls, who's quite a well-known architect. I got a response from them, which was amazing. But the coolest thing happened when I tweeted Pat Flynn a video. Many of you probably don't know who Pat Flynn is, but in the online business world, he's really, really well known. He has one of the most popular business podcasts out there. It's called Smart Passive Income. 
and he he's he's a really cool guy, really really popular, and gets a lot of emails and messages a day because he's quite open about it. He's like, oh, you know, I'm happy to help. Just send me an email. So of course he gets hundreds. And he's he was one of my biggest influences since starting my first blog and my podcast. And I was fortunate enough to meet him in San Diego in 2014 at the Social Media Marketing World Conference. And he gave me his card. It had his email on there. And I thought, you know, I'd love to have him as a guest on my show. But he receives hundreds of emails a day. He's not even going to respond to me. He probably gets requests to do interviews on podcasts all the time. And I learned that he does receive 300 to 400 emails a day. So I thought, I'm going to do something ridiculously cool. I'm going to make it impossible for him to say no. Now, I thought about it a bit and I knew that Pat Flynn liked music. uh, He has a good sense of humor. He likes beatboxing. And then I thought, okay, well, what what could I do that would appeal to that? And I thought, well, I can write a rap maybe and and create some beatboxing sounds, I guess, and and put something together. So I I decided that he would respond well to a a quirky, humorous, music-based video. So I thought I'll write a cheesy rap song and I'll set it to some downloaded backing beats. It it just seemed like the obvious thing to do, right? So, So the next step was to create the message and I wanted to include the following components. Firstly, mention that we'd met at the conference. I wanted to say what I liked about Pat. I wanted to introduce myself and say what I do and who my podcast helps. And then I wanted to ask him the question, will you be a guest on my podcast? I got set up in my apartment, sat down, turned on my camera, turned on my microphone, hit the beatboxing beats and started to rap. This is the song, it's just for you, Pat Flynn. You're a total boss of beatboxing and podcasting. You're super fun and friendly. Man, I'm such a lucky girl to have met you at Social Media Marketing World. Now, I won't play you the whole thing, but you can see the video in the show notes if you would so like. Um, I did film it all in one take. It took me about four goes, but I managed to do it in the end. Total video went for 90 seconds. Anyway, I tweeted it to him and seven minutes later, I get a tweet back from him saying, yes, absolutely, let's do it. And I was so, so excited. I was just jumping around my apartment, squealing like a little girl. It was a really, really proud moment for me. So we did the interview and what's more, after that I asked him if he could provide a a brief testimonial for me and he sent me a video. This is what he said. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income Podcast. Just wanted to take a quick second to let you know that Christina is definitely one of the most creative minds out there when it comes to understanding what it might take to get a guest who is hard to get on your show to say yes to you. She was able to get me to say yes to come on her show in a very creative way at a time when I was actually saying no to everybody. So listen to her. She knows what she's talking about. Thanks, Christina, and thank you to everybody out there watching this. So I'm living proof, guys, that if you think outside the box, you do something different, you use your creativity, and you put in that extra effort, it really goes a long way and it makes a huge difference. Now, if you're thinking, yeah, Christina, well, that's all well and good for you, you're a weirdo, you're creative, you can do these things, I can't. Well, I'm here to tell you that I've also helped clients do this too, okay? It's not just some weird ability that I have, okay? Anyone can do this and I'm going to show you how as well. I'm going to go through step by step the process that that I go through for every single creative request. But I do want to share with you the story of clients of mine, Adam and Craig from Rock City Building. They're builders and I was, working on, I was working with them on their public speaking and communication skills when they mentioned to me that they really, really wanted to get in front of this particular architect. And I said to them, look, I can help you with that. And using the outreach script template that I had had success with, I helped them to craft a script and to put together a short, sharp video to grab the attention of their target. Wow, Monique. Your motivation to use Australian design history is ingenious. My name is Craig Bullen. And I'm Adam Wolfe. And we are the creative duo at Rock City Building Group. Now you do need to see the video for it to make sense. And I'll link it up in the show notes at thecmethod.com slash creative outreach. Now I asked Adam and Craig to share a quick story of the experience of this video and the result that it had. Take a listen. The reason why we wanted to get in front of Wawawa Architects is because they're one of the better architects here in Melbourne and and us being an architectural builder, we want to work 
for and with the best. We had attract messages and different processes, but we're really struggling to convince or, or get in front of people and be noticed. Um, we used video because we thought that it's far more creative than a email or a letter or a phone call. The reaction was amazing. Uh, it took a, a week or so, but once we got it, it was exciting, super exciting. They actually felt quite flattered that we took the time to produce a little video and send it to them. The result speaks for itself. Project through the door within two days to price and then uh, a signed contract and the project started on the 9th of October. So very positive. If anyone is thinking about attracting anyone with a video, I think it's the best move ever. How good is that? They got a job, a building job from this video. I was so excited for them. It just goes to show anyone can do this. Okay, so apart from what you've just heard from my story and from Craig and Adam's story, I want to share with you the some of the other benefits of being creative with your outreach. Firstly, you stand out and you cut through all the other messages. Think about it. Influential people, CEOs, recruiters, they get hundreds of messages a day. Some people even have assistants who say no to them. Another person I reached out to, Andrew Warner, he runs the Mixergy podcast. Now, he's a serial entrepreneur. He's a multi-multi-millionaire. He's super, super popular, especially in the online business world. He keynotes at conferences. Basically, very, very busy guy. And I reached out to him with a video. And when I spoke to him, this is what he said. I have a, a team here that screens my emails and they... I told him, I can't say no to people. Can you please, if someone asks for an interview, say no. If someone asks for a meeting, for coffee, whatever, say no, I don't want to do it. And frankly, I can also say no, but I'd rather not. It's harder for me. So they usually will say no to interview requests and other requests because I'm now, I'm trying to catch up on some things and I just had a baby, so I, I want to focus internally. So temporarily, I'm saying no to all interviews. Well, not to yours. And the reason not to yours is because you sent this incredible video over. And unlike other people who just talk into the camera and blah, 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 you know, there's, they're saying nothing for, for five minutes. You kept it really short and kept it moving all the time. The editing work alone on that was just so good. I said, I have to meet her. I have to talk to her somehow. And if it's because of an interview, then that's what it'll be. But I have to see the person who put it together. And it was just a great, great video. How can you say no to someone who put in that much effort? How can you say no to someone who understands that who understands that I'm getting a lot of emails but also understands that even a long video is a, is a chore and kept it moving? You really you captured my attention and, and frankly, not just mine, but other people on the staff here. That was Andrew Warner from the Mixergy podcast. Okay, the second benefit is that you become memorable. Now, I didn't meet Andrew Warner until years later. It was at least... I think it was three years later, two or three years later, that I saw him after we had this Skype interview. And when I met him, I went up to him and I said, hey, Andrew, just wanted to say hi. And he said, hang on a second, I remember your voice. He said, Do you, did you, were you the person that sent me that video? I remember you. And I said, yeah, yeah, it's me. And he was like, oh, here's my number. Let's catch up. And he gives me his phone number. And then we go for a run the next morning, which was super cool. So when you stand out like this, you're not people aren't going to forget you easily. Okay, so it's not just about the benefit that you get from that particular, maybe the interview you do or the meeting you get, the coffee you get or that job that you get with them. It's going to last longer as well. So the benefits continue to occur. And another awesome benefit is that you build a really great relationship with them from the start. If you reach out to someone via email and they feel kind of like, oh, I've got to meet this person and that they'll feel kind of obligated to meet you or they come they come and meet you thinking okay here's another coffee catch up with this other person who emailed me but if you reach out to them and really grab their attention in a super cool way they're going to go wow i really want to meet this person and they will be happy to see you when i first got on the call with andrew warner he said i've been looking forward to this that was the first thing he said to me so imagine how much easier that conversation is going to be if you make a brilliant positive impact on that person so that they come to that meeting or that, that interview or whatever it is already excited to see you, that's going to make it much, much easier for you. 
Now, those are only a few of the benefits that I've found from from making that effort to stand out and reach out to people and connect with them in a really creative, impactful way. There are a bunch of other benefits. For example, I've actually increased my social media following. I've attracted new followers because people have seen the videos I've done and said, that's really cool. And, you know, it's just led to other things. So don't just think about it as, oh, it's a lot of work to get someone to say yes to one meeting. It's so much more than that. And the benefits just continue to show themselves. So I highly recommend that you, you give this a go. All right, let's move on to how. How do we do this, Christina, you're probably thinking. I've got seven steps for you. The first thing is to research your target. I'm assuming you already have a target, someone you want to get in front of. Research them. Find out what do they like, um, what do they do on the weekends, what are they passionate about, what are some weird quirks that they have, do they support the same sporting team as you. Do a Google search. Look at what they're tweeting about. What have they quoted in articles recently? Find out more about them. Once you've done that, step two is to assess yourself. Look at what you're good at. What are your strengths? Do you have common interests with them? What are you comfortable with? Do you like doing video? Are you good at drawing? What are the the talents or the skills that you have? And what are the resources you have available to you? Do you have someone who can help you create something? So those are the first two, two steps. Once you've done that, step three is to connect the dots. What I do is I write a massive list of stuff about them, a massive list of stuff about me, and then I connect the dots in order to generate ideas. So for example, I once reached out to an artist and I thought, okay, he's an artist. He likes visual stuff. Um, I can draw stick figures. You know, I can't draw really well, but I can draw stick figures and I can write. And so I filmed a video of my hand writing a, a message and sped it up. With, with the cool editing because I can I could do that with video. Do they like physical things? Could you design something? Could you physically make something? Is that where your strengths are? What would they respond to? Use all the, the, the things that you've written about them and about yourself to come up with, with a, an idea. If you need help, ask someone. Ask someone, what do you think would work for this person? When I sent the flip book the post-it note flip book, that was an idea from someone else actually. I said, I want to make something for an architect and, you know, he likes visual stuff obviously but I'm not sure what to do and and this random guy I met, he said, oh, you have had a flip book out of of post-it notes and I thought, that's fantastic and all I did was stick figures but, hey, it worked. Okay, moving on. I want to go through these really quickly because I realise I'm – this is turning into quite a long show. Okay, so that's step three. Step four – is to write your script. Now, this is critical because even though you're doing something super cool and fun, you want to make sure that the script and the message itself is really clear and to the point. Now, I have a template that will allow you to script out this message exactly the way that I've done it, and you can download it for free from the show notes. You don't even have to put your email in. I just want to share it. So if you go to thecmethod.com slash outreach slash creative outreach, you will find it there. You'll find my PDF script template. All you need to do is just hit download for free. You don't even need to put your email address in. I'll just go quickly through it now. The first part is the flatter. You want to grab their attention with a well thought out, personalized compliment. You can also use this opportunity to establish any connection that you may have with them. For example, I love your blog, podcast, book, whatever. It's taught me this. So something specific. You can say, I saw you speak at at this conference and you really inspired me. You could say, I implemented your advice around this and it's helped me. Okay. So make it really, really specific. So think about what have they achieved that you admire? Which of their achievements are they most proud of that you could talk about? What about them inspires you? All of these things can contribute to a well thought out flatter or compliment. Number two is your pitch. Once you've got their attention with a nice juicy compliment, tell them briefly about what you do. This is not the time for a full-blown 90-second elevator pitch. If they want more information, they will ask. The, The simple I help blank, as in the people you help, do blank, well, that will work. So really briefly, who are you and who do you help or what do you do? The third part is the question. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Just remember to keep it short. For example, 
Um, would you be willing to meet up for a 30 minute coffee? Would you be willing to be a guest on my podcast? I would love to sit with you and bounce some ideas around. Whatever the request is, make it short and simple. The fourth and final part is your call to action. Once they're completely enthralled by your message, make sure to give them a clear way to respond. How you will do this will depend on how you've delivered the message. For me, it's usually via email or tweet. If I've made a video for someone, I will tweet it to them. And I'll say to them, tweet, you know, tweet me back, like here's my Twitter, or just tweet yes. And I've often got a tweet back saying, hey, Christina, I love the video, email me here and we'll work out a time. Once you've got these components down, so that was step four, you are then going to script it out. So write out your actual script and then make your video. So that's step five. You're going to make your video, you're going to film it, or you're going to create whatever it is that you're going to do, a slideshow presentation, a, an audio thing, a, a picture, whatever it is. And you're going to put those four components of the script together. Now, if you are doing a video or, or an audio, then my recommendation is to keep it under 45 seconds. That's, I know it doesn't sound very, like much, but people have very short attention spans. Keep it to under 45 seconds. Looking back on my videos, I'm thinking, yeah, I could have made them shorter and shorter. Some of them were 90, min- 90 seconds. Some of them were a minute. But even, even then, I was like, that could have even been shorter. So I would say 30 to 45 seconds is a good length. All right, step six. Once you've got your video done, you're going to send it. Now, I like to tweet it because it's nice and short. You can get their attention and just say, hey, so-and-so, I just made this short video for you and then have the link there. If you send it by email, that also works. In the subject line, I usually write their name. So, hey, so-and-so, I made this short video for you. Now, that's going to capture their attention because how often do you get an email saying, I made this video for you, right? So send it, put the YouTube link in the email. Don't actually ask in the email, you know, the request because that's what the video is for. But just say, hey, here's a short video that I made for you. What do you say? And then put the link in. And then you take a deep breath and hit send. And now you wait, (laughs) which leads me to step seven, which is follow through. Now, you may be anxiously waiting for a response. And if you don't hear from them, you might be tempted to freak out and say, I failed or they hate me or, oh. But the truth is they probably haven't seen it yet. When Adam and Craig sent their video to the architects, they sent it via email and I think the architects were, you know, they're pretty busy, but I think they might have also been away. So don't freak out. I would also tweet it and if you can, get someone else to tweet it to them. So for example, I tweeted the video to the architects and pretended that, you know, I was a third party. I guess I am, but I was a third party going, OMG, did you see this video that these guys made for you? You must look, it's amazing. So if they get a tweet like that, I think they're going to open it, right? If you get someone else to send send them a tweet publicly going, this is amazing. Have you seen this? They're going to look at it. Okay. So recruit some friends to help you with this. And if you do all that, hopefully you'll get your result. Now, I'm sure you're thinking that this sounds like a lot of work and Frankly, it is because, hey, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, right? Small effort equals small results, but a big effort will equal big results. So if you want the reward, if you want an immediate yes, if you want to start building a great relationship with someone, if you want them to rave about you to all of their contacts and tell everyone about you and and respond to your request, you've got to put in the work. Okay, find a friend who can edit video for you or go on Fiverr. And if you're freaking out about making them super professional, please don't. Mine are nowhere near uh, professional. I'll link up in the show notes uh, the playlist of all my videos and you'll be able to see that they are not super professional. They are very rough. They are very homemade. But I believe that adds to the, the appeal and it makes it look like you've it's you creating this thing, especially for them, and you haven't paid some video agency to do the dirty work for you. It can be homemade and in fact that can even be better. 
So my challenge to you this week is to think of some ideas for reaching out to someone. If you want some inspiration, go to the show notes, thecmethod.com slash creative outreach. I have got links there to all the stuff that um, I've sent out as well as Adam and Craig's video that they sent out. I'm here to tell you that anyone can do it. You just have to start thinking outside the box or outside the inbox, as I like to say. <laughs> oh, and I'll also put a link there to the script template that I use, that, I've, that I have used for all of my invites. You don't need to put your email address in. You guys can just have it. So I hope that this has inspired you somewhat to start thinking differently about how you can make an impact with people. And if you do put in the effort and make something really cool for someone, I would love to hear it and I'd love to hear how you go as well. Email me cc at thecmethod.com or even if you want feedback on an idea, email me and I will let you know. Remember, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. But massive rewards come to the people who are willing to get out of their comfort zones and get out there and put the effort in and make a difference. Now, I'd like to leave you today with the audio of a video that I sent to my friend Jared Easley. Now, I nearly didn't send this video to him because my ukulele was out of tune and I thought it sounded terrible, but I thought I would do it anyway. And he still loved it. Thanks to Lise for being a featured guest and playing the shakers on this video as well. And that is all from me this week. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Get out there and be awesome and make someone's day, all right? I'll talk to you next week. My name's Christina Cantors and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed. Well, I've been having a blast with the launch of my new podcast. I got several guests on. Plus.